apologize for the slightly late start. Uh, my name is Lindsay Cooper. I'm an assistant professor of computer science and engineering here in the computer science and engineering department at the Baskin School of Engineering at UC Santa Cruz. And uh, I want to give a particular welcome to everybody who is at a Bang Bang Con for the first time. So if you're here for the first time, could I, could I see a show of hands? That's amazing. Let's give a round of applause. And I won't ask you to show your hands, but a lot of people are also here at their first conference ever. So we could get a round of applause for those people. So I have a few bits of administrivia to share uh, before I hand things off to my fellow organizer, Joshua, who's going to talk about our code of conduct. Uh, first of all, the restrooms. Uh, so there are two single occupancy, all gender restrooms in the back of this auditorium. Uh, both of them have some baskets uh, with things like pads and tampons in them if you need that. Uh, there are also men's and women's restrooms in the building across the courtyard that way. And there's another all gender restroom in the basement of the building next door. So if there's a line uh, in the restrooms at the back, you can always go either across the courtyard or next door. Uh, I was asked to mention that along the left side of the sections, uh, in all three sections, there are left-handed desks. So if you need a left-handed desk, you can sit on the left side of a section. Uh, we have a lost and found. It's this box right here. <laughs> if you've lost anything, look there. Uh, we do not want you to get the conference plague. Uh, it's a pretty common affliction of people who attend conferences. So I've, bro I've broken this rule myself already a few times today, but uh, we would like to encourage people to, instead of shaking hands, instead just wave enthusiastically. <laughs> All right, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to Joshua to talk about our code of conduct. Hi there, uh, good morning. Um, let's see, so I was trying to put together, is this going, can you hear that? Excellent. Uh, so I was trying to put together thoughts about a code of conduct, and the big question that I wanted to answer is why have a code of conduct? And for, I think, it's kind of this common thing to put a code of conduct on your website to say that you have a code of conduct, and that's not why we want to have a code of conduct. It's not because we have to have a code of conduct, but it's because we intentionally want to set how Bang Bang Con feels. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you in on a, a little secret about Bang Bang Con. Um, we, we talk about Bang Bang Con, so this is a conference if you're not aware, about 10 minute lightning talks, joy, excitement, and surprise of computing. Uh, if you weren't aware. Hi, welcome. Um, <laughs> but that's only a little bit of it. The other side of it is that it's also about bringing that kind of joy and excitement and surprise to faces that don't usually get to see it, faces in the room who don't usually get to be in the room. Um, and so I, I've been, there's, I'm, I'm going to mangle a quote from Dr. King, uh, and I'm going to say that, um, it, like, this is a natural follow on. Um, because withholding joy and excitement and surprise from anyone is a threat to joy and excitement and surprise for everyone, right? We can't have it without getting everybody in the room. Um, so I'm gonna let you in on a second secret for Bang Bang Con, because the first secret is not really a very good secret. Uh, the second secret is that Bang Bang Con is not about diversity and inclusion. I, I actually don't like either of those, and here's why. Diverse to me means uh, that I wanna bring a token one of you into the room so that you can benefit me, so that you, because diverse ideas are better, and you can take your diverse ideas and give them to me. Um, and, and so that, I, I don't like that. Um, and inclusive means this space belongs to me, but I'm gonna let you be in here. I'm gonna include you into my space. Um, and I don't like that either. Uh, so the code of conduct is here because I would like to have an equitable and representative space. I would like to have a space where everybody can be uh, everybody gets to stand on the same level and gets to see the same things um, rather than for any benefit to me. And I would like to see kind of not just a token one or two people of this or that, I would like to see a space that represents kind of the, the gamut of humanity. Uh, so that's, that's my other second little secret about Bang Bang Con. Um, so no matter what section of humanity you come from, I, I wanna welcome you here. Um, Anyway, so 
the code of conduct bit. Um, the code of conduct is on our website. Uh, the short form is be kind to your fellow attendees. Make everybody feel like they're welcome here. Um, there are lots, and, and so I, I, we did a spin on our code of conduct this year. We, we edited it some uh, in response to just kind of tweaking things from last year. Um, and what I've discovered is that there are a lot of ways to be unkind. Um, and if you do it accidentally, please apologize. And if you do it intentionally, uh, this might not be the right place for you. So uh, what, rather than telling you what not to do, I, rather I would just say, please act in line with our values. Um, make it a joyful and exciting and surprising place. Um, at risk of going on too long about that, how can you do that? I want to give you three tips. One is avoid feigning surprise. So this, this is, you can take these into the outside of BangBangCon if you want, by the way. So when, when somebody goes like, I've never heard of like the, that you can use colon as a token in Bash. Uh, and you, you, I've never, you've never heard that I, you can use colon as a token in Bash. Rather than doing that, take a moment to like revel in the excitement that they're about to learn that you can write a fork bomb in nine characters in Bash. Um, so, um, so avoid feigning surprise if you can do that. Um, another thing is, well, actually, because I think it's, you're about to tell me, actually, I think it's 10 characters that that fork bomb is. <laughs> Um, because I didn't count, I, I just thought of that. Um, and so as it turns out, telling me that adds basically nothing. A fork bomb is short and bash. So don't do that, there's just no need for it. Um, and the third one is, this is a whole wide family of things. There are these subtle isms, like it's obvious to say like, you don't belong here, that's, that's, a, that's an obvious ism. The subtle ism is to say like, my grandmother could do this. Well, that's, that's kind of subtly excluding the class of like folks who are older and women and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So there's, so try and avoid that. And you know, we're not gonna kick you out of the conference if you do it, but be mindful. And if somebody says, hey, you did that, go, oh, hey, good point, thanks. Um, so if you're not sure, read the code of conduct. It's on our website, it won't take long. Um, we want you to have confidence in our code of conduct. Uh, we wrote a transparency report last year. Uh, it's interesting reading. Um, keep us, kinda keep us honest. If you run into trouble, find somebody wearing one of these yellow shirts, um, or click the, there's a form link at the bottom of our code of conduct, or our friends at Twilio set up a SMS gateway that you can uh, text us and send a code of conduct, or just uh, if you wanna talk to us or any of those things. Uh, and that's 831-713-2605. Um, and so I'm tempted to say like, now that I'm done talking about things that are a bummer, I'm gonna talk about something that's also a bummer. But the code of conduct is actually not a bummer. I'm really excited about it because it makes Bang Bang Con special. Um, and you've heard that there's, you've probably heard that there's a strike on campus that there are graduate student workers who are kind of fighting for a uh, living wage. And it is a bummer that they have to fight, but I am proud to introduce Soham Banerjee to uh, talk about that. Welcome Soham. Hello. Whoa. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Soham Banerjee. Thank you, Joshua. I'm a PhD student here at the CSE department. I work in programming languages. And as of yesterday, the University of California Santa Cruz fired me for, from all furthered ASE appointments for striking for a living wage. <laughs> As an international student, this carries with it an abnegation of the university's promise to support us over the course of our studies and the threat of effective deportation. We are not allowed to stay in the country unless we maintain student status. We can't maintain student status without paying tuition. We can't pay tuition without tuition remission. You see the course of logic. But this should not be surprising because it is only the latest reification in the forces that pushed us to strike in the first place. So. What is the COLA campaign? The demand is extremely simple. Pay us enough to live here. Our graduate funding packages promise us $19,000 a year to live, to work, and to research in the city. Estimates of how much it costs to live in Santa Cruz as a single healthy student with no dependents and no other complications vary, but they start at $25,000 and they go up to $31,000 per year. To note, the lower end of that number are, is a number given by the university in its own official documentation. 
Despite that, the university has repeatedly ignored for years our attempts to go through official channels, to bargain, to plead, and to draw attention to the plight facing its graduate student workers. Our union pushed through a controversial contract in 2018 that we at Santa Cruz overwhelmingly voted against. And so we finally felt forced to take direct action and to hell with the no strike clause. And so here we are, months of stonewalling and millions of dollars spent on police brutality later. Here we are. In having this response, in deciding to fire the graduate student workers whose only request is that the university pay us enough to live here, the UC system has shown the lie of its diversity marketing. It has shown that it does not care about access to education. It shows that voices and faces like mine are only welcome here as long as we stay quiet and are willing to be taken advantage of. If you live in California, this is what your public university system is doing. If you live in America, this is what your public university system is doing. If you live in the world, this is not what your public university system is doing. <sighs> and that's awful. <laughs> Look, I'm not here to bum you out, although I assume I've done a pretty good job of it at this point. Um, what can you do to help? There's a lot. Put pressure on your public officials. Put pressure on the university system. We donate to our strike fund. It's, we've had an immense amount of an outpouring of financial support in the wake of these firings. It's frankly humbling. Um, and tell everyone that you know in a position of power, tell, or even not in a position of power, tell everyone you know that this is happening because we're done staying silent. So thank you very much. I, I wanted to mention that uh, the Bang Bang Con organizers are grateful to the strike organizing committee for uh, essentially uh, being, uh, being willing to let us have this conference. So as many of you know, we spoke with the strike organizing team and they agreed that attending the conference this weekend did not constitute crossing the picket line. And we're grateful to them for being willing to say that because understandably we had a lot of speakers and attendees and attendees who were ready to bail. So I'm really glad that this conference was able to happen uh, uh, despite the strike. So on a more positive note, so Bang Bang Con was started by a group of good friends and I in New York in 2014. And it started honestly as a joke and then it became a real conference. <laughs> and then six years later, it's become one of the most important and rewarding aspects of my career. Uh, and it's just my incredible honor and privilege to be able to bring Bang Bang Con West now to Santa Cruz for the second year in a row. So I wanna say a little bit about why we do Bang Bang Con West and uh, so computing is, is popular, right? We encourage young people to, quote, learn to code so that they can get that high paying job, right? Or so that they can make themselves or their country uh, more competitive in the global economy or maybe help their country go to war. But none of those things are why I study computer science. I study CS because I find the ideas awe inspiring and I find the people awe inspiring. And that is why we do Bang Bang Con. And it seems relevant here to share a couple of quotations with you uh, from Rachel Carson, uh, who had something to say about childlike wonder. Uh, she said, and I think this is from her book, uh, The Sense of Wonder. Uh, she wrote, a child's world is fresh and new and beautiful, full of wonder and excitement. It is our misfortune that for most of us, that clear-eyed vision that true instinct for what is beautiful and awe-inspiring is dimmed and even lost before we reach adulthood. If I had influence with the good fairy who is supposed to preside over the christening of all children, 
I would ask that her gift to each child in the world be a sense of wonder so indestructible that it would last throughout life as an unfailing antidote against the boredom and disenchantment of later years, the alienation from the sources of our strength. And that is what Bang Bang Khan is about. It's about having a sense of wonder about and, and awe about computing and about the people who do computing. Uh, and there's one last thing to say about that. So one might ask, isn't it frivolous of us to be here you know, talking about joy and wonder and eating donuts uh, while so many bad things are happening in the world, while the world is burning? And to that, I, I think the best thing that I can say is, is another Rachel Carson quote. She wrote, the more clearly we can focus our attention on the wonders and realities of the universe about us, the less taste we will have for the destruction of our race. Wonder and humility are wholesome emotions, and they do not exist side by side with a lust for destruction. In other words, it is not frivolous of us to be here talking about joy and excitement. It's, in, it's in fact, essential. And that is why we do Bang Bang Con. So with that, I'm very proud to be able to introduce our first keynote speaker, Isis Lovecraft. Uh, Isis is a cryptographer who has contributed to Signal, the Tor Project, the Electronic Frontier Foundation, and many others. They enjoy making fast, safe, and hard to misuse cryptographic libraries in Rust, walking through the woods with their wolfhound familiar, and casting curses on evildoers in tech to turn them into umbrellas. Please give your warmest welcome to Isis Lovecraft.